in a desert of ice at the edge of the earth. The search is on for something out of this world. It began with a dream to awaken a sleeping giant and raise it from its tomb. And through the powers of science, to see it rise again. Once a week, the Ilushin 18 touches down on a remote airstrip in Siberia's far north. Hatanga, a forgotten town above the Arctic Circle, was a Soviet outpost during the Cold War. Isolated by politics and geography, it seems like it's been asleep for decades. Hatanga is a way station for outdoorsmen and explorers, like Frenchman Bernard Bouygues. Since 1991, Bernard has led expeditions to the North Pole, and this has become his home away from home. To find and raise an extinct woolly mammoth from the frozen tundra is this year's mission. Longtime friend Anatoly Andrasov will provide key support. Nicknamed Nyet Problem, Anatoly is a mechanical wizard. In a place where equipment is ancient and spare parts a good barter, Anatoly's know-how will safeguard the mission's success. In his hunt for the ancient animal, Bernard gathers ammunition with 21st century tools. The woolly mammoth reigned during the last ice age, which began 100,000 years ago. The mammoth and the modern elephant are part of an ancient order of mammals known as proboscideans for their trunks. Their earliest link may have been an amphibious animal with a pig-like body and no tusks. Other distant relatives develop strange-looking lower tusks, resembling shovels or fangs. With roots in Africa dating back four million years, ancient mammoths and elephants were cousins that walked the earth together before taking separate evolutionary paths. Only the Asian and African elephants would survive to this century. Whether the mammoth is more closely related to its Asian or African cousin is a matter of scientific debate. But as it moved away from tropical climates, it's clear that its anatomy changed radically. In adaptation to the cold, the mammoth's ears shrank as they migrated north to the Arctic. They developed long, shaggy fur and a domed skull to hold the weight of heavy tusks. And their tusks grew long and curvy, perhaps to clear the ground as they forage for grass and plants. Masters of adaptation, they thrived across the northern hemisphere. In Bernard's kitchen, plans for the mammoth hunt are hatching. 
Vladimir Eisner, a Russian interpreter with a 20-year case of Arctic fever, is up for the challenge. It's a toast to success. To hunt the animal lost to history 10,000 years ago, Bernard must travel even farther north. In his two-year search, he's had little success, but he charters a helicopter, the only reliable way to check out a promising new lead. Experts think that some 10 million mammoth remains may be locked in the permafrost, most in northwestern Siberia and here in the Taimir Peninsula, where Bernard is focusing his search. Over the years, he's done some business with a nomadic tribe of reindeer herders. He's convinced that the Dalgans can help him. In their travels, they find mammoth tusks, and where there are tusks, there might be remains. scarcity, bartering is the custom. I will give him a spare part. A deal is struck, and the payoff handsome. Yes, the Dalgan chief confirms, he found a pair of tusks in a hillside a summer ago. It was the first time I saw real tusk in good condition in Tundra. It was very cold time, but I was so excited to see the first pair of tusks because the tusks belong to the same animal. Of course, after some minutes, I, 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 I have some pain in my hand, but for me, it was very exciting. If you're looking for tusks in perfect shape, the Dalgan chief urges, go see my sons just a few kilometers down the tundra. Vladimir asks if the men, Gennady and Gavriel Jarkov, can help Bernard locate a museum-quality mammoth. There's only one way to find out. Reindeer herders of Turco-Mongolian descent, the Dulgans are at home anywhere on the tundra. The only humans in an inhuman landscape the nomads eat their living out of the ice. Insulated against the cold with reindeer pelts, their small mobile homes hold everything they own. Surviving the Siberian winter is tough, and the Dulgans make do by hunting, fishing, and trading ivory they harvest for things they can't find or make, food supplies and ammunition. It's below zero when the men reach Gennady's camp. But out here, strangers are a startling sight. The surprise is mutual. Bernard realizes that he's met Gennady Jokov several years back. Once they've gotten reacquainted, he broaches the subject of his visit and asks for help. Hidden under a canvas tarp to protect them from the elements and the eyes of strangers, is a dazzling sight. Two exquisitely preserved tusks from a 